remarkable guy. Uh, I've never quite understood what turned him against Americans because prior to the raid on Columbus, Pancho Villa was very popular in El Paso. This guy walked all around, he shook hands with people, he knew the mayor. Uh, so something happened that I've never quite pinpointed it as to why we had this break in relationship between El Paso and, and, and Villa. As you, as you no doubt know, there must be, there's dozens of photographs of Villa walking around El Paso in the early days. And I'm in reading the newspapers, even in Juarez, he'd be going to a bullfight and there'd be 1,500 Americans lined up waiting or trying to shake his hand. So it's one, to me, Pancho Villa is one of the great intriguing mysteries uh, of the Mexican Revolution. And maybe one of these days we'll figure it out, but we haven't yet. a little like a brothel <laughs> area there, uh, uh, judging by the young lady's picture. But, you know, in Mexico, at the time of the revolution, brothels were quite common, and they were pretty common in El Paso also. But uh, these, these young ladies, in many respects, deserve just as much credit for being involved in the revolution, for knowing about the revolution, for, in a sense, being participants in many respects in the revolution. And I wish that so many of these young ladies would have written their memoirs, the things they could have told us, the things, the things about the Mexican revolution that we don't know, or at least we can get it with a different perspective from those young ladies and in terms of how it affected them, how it affected the family, how it affected friends, and uh, why it started and how it ended. Never have a war, but what, after the fighting and the negotiations and so on and so forth are over, but what you can look back and see the changes that took place. I find it fascinating, for instance, that from 1909 until early 1916, Pancho Villa was a very popular figure in El Paso. There are dozens of photographs walking around with Villa shaking hands, eating in various homes. So one of the big questions is, what turned him against Americans? And we don't know. We have lots of I we have ideas and suppositions, but we don't know. But the Mexican Revolution is is something, in my opinion, that not only affected Mexico, but it has an interest worldwide. People can here we have the photographs of what's going on. We have the writings of the various individuals, the diplomats, the soldiers themselves, the revolutionaries. Uh, such a churning, changing uh, world in which it was, you can't help but wonder if it wasn't for the Mexican Revolution, how different would the El Paso Wada Southwest be today? In my judgment, it would be quite different. But how different, I don't know. I couldn't offer an opinion, and we'll never know, I guess, because, uh, because the, the revolution now is over. A magnificent collection of Mexican revolutionary photos. As far as I'm concerned, and I've looked at a lot of pictures and I've been in a lot of museums, but I've never seen anything to equal what you have here in the Chamizal Museum. And I would hope that these things are collected and, and kept and, and uh, the, the collections in itself is simply invaluable. I, I would think that with the period of the Mexican Revolution now being upon us, and it's going to be here for the next 10 years, why what we now call the Chamizal Museum is 
it ought to be so packed with people that they'd have trouble getting in and out the doors. The situation in Mexico as it stands now in 2009 is, in my judgment, sad. And in many respects, it's going back to a different era, but that, that different era was a violent era, and what we have today was a violent era. The characters have changed, different individuals in, are involved. We have no leaders such as Pancho Villa. The American army may or may not uh, intervene eventually in Mexico, but nevertheless, the period in which we're talking about now, from the last, from 1950, let's say, through the, to, through 2020, it's a period of big changes. Individuals are coming and going, laws are changing, uh, languages are crossing and recrossing the border. Historians are getting involved and in telling the history of the, uh, of the past involvement of the United States and Mexico. There is so much in Mexico that Americans can learn. And I think we've reached a point where Americans now are taking an interest. They're wondering, they're, they're reading the books, they're looking at the movies, they're trying to understand how it started and why and, and what kind of a relationship, how, how we should relate to it. I think, unfortunately, we have, a, we have a border, a boundary, an international boundary that separates us. But on the other hand, it separates us only in terms sometimes of traveling back and forth. What isn't separating us is the fact that we still have telephones, we have newspapers, we have letters. Uh, we have radio and we have television, and these things, not only, even though they're, the film is mostly shot in Mexico, nevertheless, the film is shown in El Paso and other American cities, and out of that, Americans uh, can see the tragedy, but they can also see the possibilities, maybe somewhere down the road.